Hey everyone, Jad here. This week on Teamfight Breakdown, we're covering the final team fight from SK Telecom T1's through on victory over the Rocks Tigers from the LCK Spring Finals. This series was a rematch of the 2015 World Championship Finals, and this is also the third time we've covered an SKT vs. Rocks fight on TFBD this season. Funnily enough, each of those times we broke down fights that took place around major objectives, and this fight is no different. Here, the clinching fight of this series happened 48 minutes into the game when Rox attempted to bait a Baron fight only to be crushed by SKT's collapse. Looking at the two team compositions, they're actually quite similar. Both teams have a super tanky top laner, a marksman jungler, a mage mid laner, poke centric AD carries, and tanky supports. Therefore, while both teams set up with tanks in the front line and damage in the back line, Kuro's Lissandra somehow needs to flank SKT's backline since Lissandra's not nearly as effective against tanks as Faker's Cassiopeia is. In this game, Rox had battled back from 4k gold down at 41 minutes to being even at 48 minutes. They decided to force Baron to draw SKT in as they saw Duke's Ramus in the top lane at half health. And a fight where SKT starts with a half health tank is a good fight to take. Due to the tankiness of Smeb's Poppy and the lifesteal of both of Rox's marksmen, Baron doesn't even scratch them, negating the usual disadvantage you would expect from a team trying Baron. The hope for Rox is that SKT funnel in poorly while trying to stop or steal Baron, allowing Rox to catch a game-winning fight. Let's get into it. When Rox realize how quickly they're killing Baron, Smeb's Poppy begins charging his ultimate, looking to knock Blank's Kindred away to eliminate the chance at a steal. Wolf's Alistair gets knocked away, but the instant before the Poppy ultimate would knock Blank away, he flashes over the wall. Rocks are committed to securing the Baron, and in doing so, also commit to a full-on teamfight. Smeb's Poppy heroic charges Blank's Kindred against the wall, then Kuro's Lissandra joins the fray by taking his glacial path forward. Notice that for the start of this fight, both of Rox's marksmen, Praise Corky and Peanut's Graves, are still finishing off Baron, costing Rox valuable time and damage in the team fight, where they would have had a one-man advantage thanks to the Poppy ultimate. But instead, Rox begins the fight three versus four. Smeb's Poppy stun onto Blank's Kindred is chained with a Lissandra ultimate from Kuro, and Blank drops dangerously low. However, before Blank dies, Duke's Ramus lands a taunt onto Kuro's Lissandra, preventing him from casting any more spells. And Blank then uses his QSS, so he's able to cast his Lamb's Respite the instant before he would have died. This is also when Baron dies, and Praise Corky and Peanut's Graves are able to join the fight. Right now, the game is at its breaking point. Both of Rox's marksmen dash forward to make up for lost time, while their tanks, Smeb's Poppy and Gorilla's Trundle, do their best to block for the damage dealers. Unfortunately for Rox, with Kuro's Lissandra still taunted and unable to turn away, everything lines up beautifully for Faker's Cassiopeia. Taking full advantage of the grouped up opponents, Faker's Cassiopeia lands a perfect four-man petrifying gaze, stunning everyone on Rox except for Praise Corky for two seconds. Not only does this give Blank's Kindred and Duke's Ramus time to escape, but it also gives time for Bang's Ezreal to shift forward and deal damage on a Peanut's Graves. Wolf's Alistair, who finally makes it back from Poppy's Keeper's Verdict, takes revenge by pulverizing Smev's Poppy and Gorilla's Trundle, then exhausting the only non-stunned member of Rox, Praise Corky. As Lamb's Respite expires, Rox lose Gorilla's Trundle, and their plan to bait with Baron falls apart. They need to scatter, but SKT won't let them. Peanut's Graves tries to run up the river, but he's quickly finished off by Bang's Ezreal. Smeb's Poppy and Praise Corky are also both retreating through the jungle, but are flashed after by Bang's Ezreal and Faker's Cassiopeia, who pick up the final two kills of the fight for SKT. Looking back, this whole fight started because Rox was trying to force SKT into a fight with a half-health tank. It also displayed the danger of forcing Baron this late into the game. Rox managed to secure the Baron, but it put them in a position where they were late to the team fight. There also isn't that much space in either the Baron Pit nor the River, so teams are prone to grouping up, leading to some massive AoE combo opportunities. The clinching moments in this fight for SKT were when Blank's Kindred managed to QSS at the last possible moment to cast his Lamb's Respite and stay alive, while also absorbing crucial cooldowns from Rox. This allowed Faker's Cassiopeia to take advantage of Rox's positioning and land a four-man ultimate. All told, 
Faker used his 1,081 AP Cassiopeia to deal 7,008 damage to Rox during the fight and pick up the triple kill. With the teamfight win, SK Telecom went on to win the game and the series. This is SKT's fifth LCK Champions title, and with it, they'll go on to represent Korea at the 2016 Midseason Invitational.